Welcome to the subject is moot where everything we discuss is debatable. I am Dom and across from me is Mike. And a special thanks to Vinny and Quiz, the producers of the podcast. We want to hear from you, so write in your opinion, comments, or topics you want us to talk about too. The subject is moot at yahoo.com and we will bring them up during future shows. You could also follow us on Twitter at TSIM underscore podcast. As well as Facebook, in the search bar, just type in Dom Mike or the subject is moot, and you'll find us. We recently added a YouTube channel, so just type in the subject is moot. All right, Mike, episode 17, are you ready? Are you are you done listening to Christmas music? Yeah, pretty much. Did you yeah. put your last CD away? Sadly enough, but it's time to move on. There's been a handful of good releases that I'll touch on later in the show that got me, pulled me right back in. It's already almost the end of January. Why don't you just leave all your CDs out, your Christmas decorations, and consider yourself done for decorating in... Uh, 2018? Yeah, we are in 2018, so 11 months away. I mean, yeah, it'll why, be here before you know it anyway. Yeah, why bother? Oh. I mean, stores put out their Christmas decorations in August. Pretty much. You go to Costco and you see you know, the nativity scene and a couple of trees and a snowman by August, and it's not even Halloween. I, I would much prefer for them to wait until at least Halloween is over, but those days are long gone. They want to make money. Yep. Money. Well, anyway, this episode is brought to you by Sweetwater.com. Sweetwater has been providing music instruments and pro audio since 1979. They have excellent products, pricing, and customer service. Sweetwater also offers interest-free financing, free shipping to the lower 48 states, and an exclusive free two-year warranty, which comes with nearly every product they offer. They are located in the United States in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Call 800-222-4700 for sales assistance, technical questions, or advice. You could also check them out on their website, sweetwater.com. Great company. Great people. Have you ordered from them anything? Not recently. I mean, I'm not really buying equipment anymore, but I, I would probably, <clears throat> if it wasn't for my good friends at their store that I, in my neighborhood, I would definitely order from them exclusively, but I really haven't been buying much equipment anyway. I just ordered a a Zoom uh, desk, like kind of like tabletop recorder. So when we take our podcast on the road, Zoom also makes something similar, but it's a video camera that you can videotape on micro SD card um, concerts or whatever. That's cool. What I like about it is you could set the recording volume. So even though what your ears are hearing at the concert or show you're at very distorted, it won't distort on the audio of your uh, video recording. Pretty cool product. It sounds it. I like it. Zoom makes good stuff. Tweets. All right. The topic today uh, is an interesting one. It's one that Mike and I have uh, spoken about many times and is on the list of things to talk about. But on November 1st, James Torme, the multi-award winning singer and the son of three-time Grammy Award winning jazz legend Mel Torme, tweeted... The Velvet Fog. Yes. He tweeted... One of the greats. A very interesting question. And something that seems fitting, especially in today's society with politics and uh, discussions running rampant everyday conversations quite frankly i'm tired of it i you know what i stopped listening to the news but november 1st 2017 james torme asks this question do you think artist artists should use their concerts and events to make political statements or speeches how do you feel about that mike it's a great question short answer well there's really no right answer, unfortunately, but... The subject is moot. It's true. The short answer for you is... I prefer them not to, but as we'll elaborate, it's deeper than just that. My short answer is no. Right. Stop. Don't take that away from me. I know. Don't take away the concert. Don't take away that distraction away from me. Yeah, it's tough, because it's art, and art... Is art. We responded back to that question on November 2nd, and we wrote, you and I wrote, Mike, um, music is an escape and should, shouldn't should be mixed with politics. If you want to voice your political stance, grab a 15-minute spot on CNN or Fox News. I kind of felt that's what both you and I yeah, you know, yeah. uh, believe. But you know, a lot of people wrote in. I doubt most of these people who were whining about politics or their political stances would be on Fox News. <laughs> A lot of people wrote in and they, they agreed with us. Uh, let, let's read a few. but And then there were some people who said that they didn't mind. Right, right. Um, kind words, K-E-I-N words. So uh, thank you very Well, not thank you. You didn't write in to me. But it's he wrote, no, it cheapens the art. It cheapens their art. And 
I kind of think it does. And Virgil on the Verge Sheridan writes back. He writes, uh, "I want to hear your music." Period. Interesting. I mean, that's that's basically what it comes down to. What are you there for? It's a concert. Why do you need to hear after an hour and a half of them playing? Uh, you know, vote for Trump, vote for Hillary. Well, they just sneak it in, in the middle. It may not even be as blunt as that either. It's usually, you know, some are. Some are, like a friend of mine just went to see Roger Waters and he said Pepper Drew the whole night was anti Trump stuff. Yeah. And I personally don't really care because I'm not a political person, but it gets to the point where are you trying to brainwash? Are you trying to force force your political beliefs down everyone else's throat? You know? And that's that's when to me it gets overdone. If you continue, if you want to just take, if you write a song about something and it's in your, it's within your art, I don't mind it so much because I, I have the choice to say, I either go to the bathroom at that point if it's at a show or if I'm listening to it on the, on a CD or whatever, I'll just skip over it if it's bothering me that much. But if it, if it's ongoing throughout the whole show, then you're using it as a platform. Then you're using your show and your audience as a platform to push your ideals. I think if you mention it once, you're pushing it. What's the purpose? Uh, well, well, why are they not talking about anything else? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Why, are they, why don't they talk about charities and donating to this cause or that cause? You and I both know the answer to that. Well, because they're, they're not the, getting any money. They're on the, the payroll. Backs, right. They're on the payroll. Quiet Storm replied back to James Torme's uh, question I'm not in favor unless it's sold as an audience with. We're paying to listen to their art. You don't see politicians start singing. And then Dan Thom writes, well put, and we don't want them singing. Leave singing to the pros. I mean, these are all responses that are pretty much agreeing with us, but I'm just trying to, here's another one. Uh, I think it's Lammer Salada uh, wrote, no, we want to listen to the music. Absolutely. That's what the concert's all about. How many politicians have you ever seen go up on, on, a, on a platform when they when they do their they do their speeches or whatever with a, with a shirt that says, go out and buy Bruce Springsteen's album? They or, don't. Or have a sign that says, for your information, the new Beyonce record's out. They don't. Do you see that? No. So, Brian Sterling pretty much um, wrote exactly the way I feel. Honestly, I don't. Most of the audience just want to be entertained and forget the stresses in the world. It kind of goes back to what you know to what we wrote. It's it's uh, it's an escape. You know, I don't listen. I just went to see Billy Joel right before Christmas. In between each of his songs, he sang Christmas tunes. He played Christmas tunes. Okay, it made it a lot more fun. He didn't grab the mic and start talking about politics. And take that away from the crowd. I, you know what? I just, I just can't. I don't agree with it. Even if you're up there talking about the person who I would vote for, I don't want to hear it. Oh, I mean, I feel the same way. Okay, you don't do that at basketball games. You don't have a politician coming out at halftime. You don't have Michael Jordan saying at halftime, "Vote for this one, vote for that one." It, it, it's. But you take notice, and, and nobody wants to say this. A lot of it's one-sided. It's heavily one-sided. And again, I'm not for any particular party. I'm not a political person. But it, it's any person with common sense could tell it's it's very one sided. It's all one sided for the most part. Most of the time it is too. <clears throat> and I know what's funny. How many people made fun of and bashed country for always being patriotic, right? Hmm. Now, for being anti patriot or just an, anti establishment for the most part, everyone's kind of sticking up for everyone there. Like where you know. It, it's it's kind of hypocritical in a set in a sense. There was an article in U.S. Magazine where I guess the magazine interviewed Mark Wahlberg. Okay, Marky and, Mark for all you music fans out there. And I'm going to quote. I'm going to read exactly what he said in the quote. A lot of celebrities did do and shouldn't talk politics. He told the magazine, explaining that A-listers aren't on the same playing field as the common voter. They might buy your CD or watch your movie, but you don't put food on their table. You don't pay their bills. A lot, of the, a lot of Hollywood is living in a bubble. They're pretty much out of touch with the common person, the everyday guy out there providing for their family, end quote. True words were never spoken about, you know, you know Dom, with what with, with and Mark said there. With this Marky topic, Mark absolutely. Wahlberg. I mean, this topic actually is, is this, that quote really does feed right into this topic. Right. And the question from James Torme. And it's, it, it's, it's. True common sense. I mean, if we if you sit there and you think like, oh yeah, that's that makes complete sense, and, and it's true. But shame on us as a society, as the public, who allow these people to form our decisions because we're fans of them. I mean, that's ridiculous. And I buy tons of music. I read articles about my favorite musicians or actors or whatever, but it doesn't mean anything to me. 
Well, when they you're start a lot preaching. more, but you're more level-headed than the, the other people out there. And I don't know what percentage of people are out there, but take Dream Theater, Van Halen, all right, my Joe Satriani, my top artists. If they tell me they're going to vote for this person, that doesn't mean I'm going to vote for that person. Exactly, I feel the same but way. But the other people are like, oh, well, that, yeah, you know what, I'm going to do that. Well, if he likes them, maybe I will. Exactly. Oh, well, she. Well, right. you know what? I grew up as, you know what, be a leader, not a follower. Now, you have Mark Wahlberg saying this. He's he's a celebrity. Right. He's a much more level-headed. But he's speaking common sense, and he's also he's also really being gutsy because he's saying something that too many people don't want to say because... They're afraid they're, they're going to ruin their fandom. Right. Their fans. Right. Well, who was the artist? Plus, there's a bigger agenda behind it all. We're well, not going to delve into that. No, we don't listen. But there's this... a huge. there's a much bigger agenda behind that whole situation, but we won't get into that. No, and listen, you know what? Mike and I don't talk politics, and we're really not talking politics. Okay, this is just a question we're that came up. A, yeah, we're addressing, we're addressing the topic. A, a question, a, a really good question that James Torme asked, and I can't believe the artists don't get that. I, I really can't believe, like... It's beyond it. It's no, beyond but, that. It's beyond not getting it, Dom. But I'm now, who was, who was the artist that you had said the other day that any of the Trump voters who are fans of mine don't come to the next show? Todd Rundgren. Apparently he has, I mean, I didn't read too deep into it, but I, I'm almost, I mean, obviously I saw it somewhere in a music site and he was saying like, you know, if you support Trump, don't come to my shows. That's like as ignorant as ignorant can get as far as statements being made. Now, my next question is, what if all his supporters were Trump supporters? All of them. You know what? He knows they're not. Well, at, at least he know. I'll put it this way. At least he's pretty sure that at least 75% of them are not. You know how many Trump supporters are out there? And I'm, again, we're not going to get into... I'm, I'm, believe it, please believe me, I'm not a political guy. But you know how many Trump supporters are out there that won't admit it? Admit what? That was a statistic that was done. They won't admit they voted for him. They're afraid. Right. Yeah, exactly. They're afraid to. What kind of country? The same people who want to preach free speech mm -hmm. are condoning free speech. Because you are for somebody. Mm -hmm. so. Listen, I, I I knew somebody who voted for Trump, and they were literally shunned in their workplace. Right. They that 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 people would not talk to them because they voted for Trump. Right. Look, it's a free country. M music and politics have been married together for years. It and it's it, it gets broken down. It gets broken down to different like if 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 you take apart. The, the political views behind music and lyrics and stuff. It's anti-establishment. It's anti-war. There have been anti-war songs. Been songs. But I don't been, mind music. Or I don't mind lyrics and songs that uh, that talk about politics. Whoever it is. Whether it's Bono, John Lennon, right. Ted Nugent. Uh, it's when they use their shows as platforms. That's all. What, that's my, that's the my, only, that's the question. That's James's question. Right. The question is, should they be using their platform? Uh, um, an actress, an actor wins an award. They go up on the stage. Instead of thanking the people who got them there, they start talking about politics. Yep. Okay? Forget it. It's not that you're taking that away from your fans. They don't care. Is, it still, is it still all about them, though? That's what. That's my egos. point. It is egos. Because they feel. They ha but they have a right. I'm so-and-so. Right. Again. And that's the thing. We, we, we've gotten... We, we, we've, 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 the, the spectrum is too broad. Because we, we, we came 50 years ago... Everybody's feelings and everybody's ideas had to be suppressed. You kept it quiet. You kept it in your house, and that's the way it was. Now we're on the opposite side of the spectrum, where everybody feels that they have a right to say and do whatever they want, and if you, if it's not allowed, then we riot. Then then we make a big deal. So it's we need to we need to grab that middle ground again, where everybody kind of just you know we could still be friends if you don't. Agree with me. On nah, you know what though? I don't think people. I think I don't want to use the word ignorant, but look what happened to that that one person who voted for Trump, and they got shunned in their workplace. Yeah. Okay. I don't care who you vote for. I don't. And you know what? I don't even care that Bruce Springsteen wants you to vote for this person. If I don't want to vote for that person, that doesn't mean I'm going to dislike Bruce and his music. Again, right. I don't care if you sing about it because, to be honest with you, the, that's art. That's <clears> the art behind it. And I have no problem with that. Okay, as long as you're not derogatory. Freedom of expression. Absolutely. Okay, and they have, look, they have their right of speech, free speech, but what, I don't want to just talk about it at concerts. I don't want to belittle the, the subject but or, or the the question, but no, I don't think they should be taking that their, their the stage and using it as a platform 
If you want to sing about it, that's fine. The reason why I don't care about that is because I don't listen to lyrics too much. The first thing I listen to is the music, the arrangement, the instrumentation, and then the vocals, not yeah. the lyrics. The lyrics are the last thing that I actually want to listen to or that I hear. And that could be another show because you've heard lyrics from a lot of different bands out there that you almost, after you heard the song probably 50 times and you know every nuance of the song, then you probably start listening to the lyrics and you're like, hey, let me listen to the lyrics. And you pull out the liner notes and you start reading them and you're like, wow, what the heck are they saying here? Listen to Bobby Darren, those songs Clementine and Artificial Flowers. Just listen to those lyrics, how crazy and wacky they are. And that could be another show because there are some wacky lyrics out there. I don't even care about them. I feel the same way. That's why I listen to so much instrumental music. That's a that won't that won't light anybody's uh, fire. Well, again, if you go back to what you were saying on the topic is at shows, but even at shows, most of these instrumental bands just go up there and take care of business and split. So or artists, but but even then, they you never know. They could still use it as they could still use the stage, the grand stage as their platform for pushing their political beliefs too. Well, <clears throat> you get those people who. Listen, we're big fans of our artists. We, we support them, okay? But we're not going to let them tell us what to do. And it's a shame that there are many listeners or, or fans out there who let their artists dictate or brainwash them into voting for. And you know what? You're right. Shame on them. Shame on them, not shame on us. Shame on the people in society who let that happen. It's been going on for years. Because what, what's his name? Since the beginning of time. What's his uh, Sinatra backed... And pushed for Kennedy hard on TV, at his shows. He went to Kennedy, some of Kennedy's rallies. And you're talking about the biggest star of the time. Mm. You talk about, you know, opportunity knocking. The two of them helped each other out heavy duty. But Sinatra didn't Sinatra really need help? Actually, Sinatra helped Kennedy more than Kennedy could help Sinatra. That's what's, a fact. What's Kennedy going to help Sinatra, Sinatra do? Well, I'm saying, but, I'm, but at that point, mm. Sinatra was already gigantic. Yeah, no, it's so, it's a one way street there. I mean, you know, Sinatra could that be help? where it's that whole that, that this has all started? Could that have been the start no, of all of this? No, no I don't no. know. And no. I don't, I don't. Sinatra wasn't the first singer, and politics didn't really wasn't wasn't a wasn't established when Sinatra was popular. I mean, it's politics have been around since the beginning. Of no, but the time. I'm saying and, poli politicians using celebrity nah, that celebrityism. I can't tell you where it started. Them. I can't tell you where it started. But you know, you know what? I I don't. I think I think it's it's long before then. Kennedy knew in his mind when he brought Sinatra on board the amount of help he, he was going to get from Sinatra and his fans. So that's what I'm saying. Could that have been the catalyst to the way things are today? I don't know. I, don't I, know. Can't, answer, I can't answer that. I don't know before that who, if, if that, that whole that theory was used at, you know, by politicians to help to get to seek the help of a celebrity. Yeah, I'm sure it had been. You know, celebrities in... in in uh, there were commercials and, and um, listen, I don't but see now public it, service announcements. But that's fine. That's fine. I don't care if Sinatra was on the on on JFK's campaign. I don't have, I don't care if he was his campaign manager. I'm not. That's not my point. My point is don't take that away from the fans who pay good money to see you and support you. And, right. Because you know what? Where would you be without the fans? Yeah. Okay. Sometimes I think their ego gets too big that they forget that a lot of a lot of artists forget it. They should just at the end of the show say. Vote for the Democrats. How about just this? Thanks for coming. Thanks. Well, have a great night. Thanks for coming. Vote for this one. Good night. I'm out. I don't even need to hear that. No, I'm just saying I that's know. that's if you're on, on your way out. Just say that if you feel like okay, that's what I need to say. But they don't get it. They don't get it. And I would say the first. If I've been going to concerts since 1990, was my first show that I ever that I ever attended live show. So I've been going to shows for 27 years. I would say for the first 20, I had never thought to myself for a second going to any of these shows that I would hear anything remotely political. It was really, this has really been picked up again in the past 10 years or so. Mm. Probably since, it's all post 9-11. I think it's, it's all post 9-11, man. I think it's also, it's also more now. I mean, everybody is just, I mean, it's on the news every single day, whether it's uh, fake news, whatever news. Yep. I stop listening to the news. I really, I get my news from Twitter. I just go into the certain sections and I read what I need to read. I, I I put on the radio to listen to the weather and the traffic, and that's pretty much it. I don't want to hear it anymore. It's I'm getting tired. I'm not getting tired. I'm already tired. It's all force fed. Look, Mike, this is a subject that we can go on and on. It's moot. 
Yes, it is moot. <laughs> but you know what? It's funny because James posed the question, and I'm kind of curious to know what he thinks, what James Tomei thinks. Yeah. Well, hopefully we can get in touch with him and tell him to listen in, but get his feedback. <clears throat> but you know what? It, it can go on and on. We can talk about this, this all day long, and that's why we don't talk politics because, like I said, this is really a full circle conversation. Yep. Okay, you're really just leading down, you know, down a path that goes nowhere. But uh, let's uh, let's bring up your uh, new release corner here. Mike's new release corner. Yeah. Is it time for that? It's time. Well, it's I'm January. Excited. It's January, so you know what you. Uh, this has been a few months in the making. This new release corner. I've always wanted to kind of do this. You did it once before. Yeah, I know, but I really wanted it to be like a, a part of the you know the monthly. Well, considering we haven't done a show since July. God. <laughs> so. I mean, so and nobody wants to hear me sit here and read off six yeah. months of... Uh, yeah. Let's start from January 2018. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go through every new music release. I'm going to hit on some of the highlights of, you know, obviously, in my opinion, or you know, in, in the rock and metal world. Um, so we'll go back to the 12th. We'll start with January 12th, because usually right after Christmas and the new year, music takes a little bit of a break from releasing anything big. You know, they try to get it in before Christmas, and then there's a little few weeks where there's really nothing coming out, and then you're talking about a lull, a bit of a lull, yeah, yeah a, lull, a bit of a lull, if you will, yeah. Uh, January twelfth, um, a great band called Audrey Horn released an album called Blackout, really good rock throwback, like um, almost like seventies, eighties metal slash rock, nice twin guitar harmonies, really good stuff. Corrosion of Conformity. Released a new record after many years. I'm sure a lot of a lot of their fans are excited about that. Ty Tabor from King's X released a solo album called Alien Beans, and a great, great like, throwback '80s like metal type band called White Wizard released a, their new album in Infernal Overdrive, which is excellent. And last but not least, for January 12th is the one and only Joe Satriani released his new studio album called What Happens Next. And what happens next is another quality fantastic release by Joe Satriani and I'm partial obviously you think a bit how is it really how is it really compared to flying in a blue dream I know nothing compares to flying in a blue dream uh, I'm gonna be honest everything Satriani puts out is good for me I love everything he does and Joe is Joe and every note he plays is ear candy it's like money in the bank pretty much with Joe Satriani pretty much so I'm not gonna keep going on about Joe and Swooning over Joey Satch. Everybody that you just listed there, I know I talk about Joe over anybody else you just listed. That's not really my uh, my section here, you know, with all your metal. Well, listening. Uh, I, that's why I can't go on. It's, there's been obviously there's way more releases. Look into, you know, if you just Google new metal releases, new rock releases, new music releases, you'll find them. Uh, we'll skip ahead to this past Friday, which was January 19th. Found Zach Wilde and Black Label Society released Grimmest Hits. And no, it is not a greatest hits. It's a new studio album, which is excellent. Um, my man Al Joseph, great, great guitar player, released uh, more of a band-oriented album. Uh, I'll spell it. It's H-Y-V-M-I-N-E, and the album is called Earthquake. Great stuff. It's a uh, good, solid mix of good rock and great guitar playing, really good vocals. Uh, another un- Two other underground bands you'll find on Bandcamp, um, Aviations. Released a record called The Light Years, really good stuff, and a, a, more of a death metal band called Xenosis, X-E-N-O-S-I-S, released their new record, which is fantastic, called Devour and Birth. And off of the metal realm, one of my favorite bands, this sister, gr- sister group called First Aid Kit, released their new record called Ruins, really good, like, folky singer-songwriter stuff, just great harmonies, really has a good... A, real, a, a different sound. They've been out. They've, they've had a few records out, but their new one is, is really good too. And looking forward to next week, just some few releases. Uh, John Five and the Creatures. It's Alive is coming out. A great guitar player, John Five, played with White Zombie. The uh, classic metal band from the East, Loudness, releases another. I think it may be like release number somewhere between 25 and 30 in their catalog. Releases their new record, Rise to Glory. Machine Head releases Catharsis. A really, really, really good proggy metal band called Orphan Land releases their new record. And Mike LaPon, the bass player from the one and only Symphony X, releases his new record, Mike LaPon, Silent Assassin. Check these out. And if you're not interested in any of these and you just want to look up new releases, just Google it. There's so much great music out there. 
Are oh, you done? I can go on and on. Oh, I know you can. And on. Actually, I'm sorry. On the 16th, which is kind of in between, in the middle there, betwixt and between, was betwixt. it betwixt? Yes, huh. was uh, released by another really good local uh, band camp band called Dear Apollo, called Volume One. It's an EP, and they're actually going to be my artist of the podcast a little later on. Nice. Well, First Aid Kid, I have to say, is really a really nice, good band. Right? Those two girls, sisters, yeah, sisters. They got it. They really. <clears throat> Have a connection. We listened to it before, and, and you know what? That was actually a, a very good... Makes me want to go out and buy it. Very, very good. Different. Yep. Different sound. I will yeah. say it's a different sound. Just got a good voice. Their last their last studio album... All, all their stuff is enjoyable, but their last studio album is, is, is really, really, really... Was it really kind of got me on board with them. Mike, this episode 17 is, is coming off the heels of some sad news in the music industry... It just seems like we keep losing Never artists. Ends. I mean, it just ends. it just seems like last year and it seems like 16, 17, and now, well, 18 is a new year, but it seems like 16 and 17 was just one after the other. But Dolores O'Riordan from the Cranberries, which I absolutely love that band. I love her voice, the sound, everything about it. Uh, and it's funny because it was only about a month ago where, you know, the Cranberries came on the radio and I said, you know what, I have to I have to pick up more of their albums. You know, I just, just can't get enough of her vocals. I love female vocals in rock and um, then you hear about the the sad news it's just a shame and uh, I just I know we all have to go but I wish it would just you know slow down she was so young too young yeah too young so uh, you know our hearts go out to her family friends and fans and you know it's a shame she was uh, she'll be missed so, Mike, really quick, uh, we'll wrap, start wrapping this up, but how was your Dream Theater concert? I didn't really get a chance to go to the Images and Words. 25 years, man. Makes me feel old. Yeah. 25 years since there was, it was, you know, Dream Theater is... is Come on, is, I don't expect you to say it was nothing else but perfect. But No, no, uh, well, I mean, you know, Labrie gave it his best shot. This, You know, he's not a young man anymore. Not that he's old, but you know, those high notes aren't as easy to hit anymore. Not at all, no. But he did, he, he did give it his best. And, and, you know, then they came out and played Change of Seasons. I mean, come on. That was a... It was a bonus treat. Yeah. You know? They did all of Images and Words. And then to, to wrap up the night, as if it wasn't enough, they gave the fans Change of Seasons. Mm. I mean, this is why their fans feel the way they do about them. I was really, really, really hoping that Portnoy would have showed showed up for what? What to be in the front row? No, sitting on the stage. No, to come back. I, I really, Mangini's a beast. He's a he's a monster drummer and a, probably a fantastic. Looks like he's a fantastic guy. But but they talk right. I mean, because I saw him and Petrucci on Twitter. There was a recent picture, yeah, that just him surfaced. And John. Yeah, yeah. Maybe hey, listen, if they can't get together in Dream Theater, maybe they can at least re- resurrect Liquid Tension, hopefully, or at least Portnoy, because I know. Petrucci's got his whole solo album in the tank, just waiting to be either recorded or, you know, I think he's got a full one written. So maybe Pono will play on his uh, solo album, hmm. at least. It was I would like sh- to see Liquid Tension back, though. It was a show that I wish I, I would have went to, but you know what? It's just it's hard getting to these shows with my schedule and uh, not knowing where I'm going to be. So uh, some, sometimes if, if, you know, it's a last-minute thing, I could say, hey, yeah, all right, I'll be there. But um, Well, it's, it's, I've scaled back my shows, too, but Dream Theater 25th Anniversary show is something i could not miss no i know as a fan too i should have been there but you know i look at billy joel and um that was the first show i've been to in a while that's a great one to go to and that was a treat absolute treat and i sat to the let's say if you're sitting if you're standing in front of the stage i sat to the right and his he sits where his piano sits he spins so he was facing us at a certain point then he was facing the front crowd and then he was facing the left side of the stage but which, what was nice is because I'm getting old, is that I sat behind the speakers, right, and below them, so I didn't walk out of there hearing nothing. Still but, buzzing, but yeah, hearing ringing in my ears. Yeah, Joe, Billy, Billy Joel is is still going, and it's amazing. And you know, if people, I would love to hear a new studio album from him because he's one of my favorite songwriters of all time, uh, if not my favorite song songwriter. Um, I always say he was my Beatles growing up from my era, but I would love to hear something new by him only because he's such a great songwriter. But I guess if he feels like he doesn't have it in him, then don't do it. And I kind of, I'm okay with that, I think. He, uh, he, he, the way he approached the show was he comes out, he sings a song, and then he says, 
I got this album here and I got this out al- this other album and so he tells you this song all right I could either play this song or this song so basically the crowd picked the song right which is cool that's, yeah which that's is a great, great. there was no set list it's just like the crowd that's picked a fantastic the song. format I wish a lot of bands would do that that'd be great yeah, and but maybe maybe not. I mean, you better be careful what we wish for. Well, you know what? He made it fun. He made it almost very very casual. Okay, you know, you kind of would see that atmosphere in a, in a local bar or lounge. Well, but it goes ma- back to what you were saying earlier too. It's this, you want to escape. Yeah, and if you go there and have fun, and the artist gives you their all, mm. that's that's an escape. It's fun. He made it. He made it very relaxing, very very casual atmosphere, and it was tremendous. He did not sing Captain Jack though. I mean, he sang pretty much all the ones you want to hear him sing. You know, he didn't sing Captain Jack, one of my all-time favorite songs by Billy Joel. And I'm, by all means, not disappointed. Did he sing Down East Alexa? Yes, he did. Which is one of my favorite songs ever written. He just blew, he absolutely blew that apart. I love that song. It was a, he played that, he played a great, he played that awesome. Yes. So, yes. The short answer is, no. I don't think he said, no, he didn't sing that. Um, Those later, my later, later favorites. In his career. There really was not many songs that I, like, you know, I don't like every Billy Joel song. There's a couple songs that I was like, ah, you know, I could take it or leave it. But he pretty much sang every one that I liked. Right. That's good. You know. And, That's what makes uh, a Billy Joel concert so good. There's very few you may not like, if there's any. No, nah, he, he really just nailed it. I mean, it was probably one of the, the top three shows I've ever seen. You know, definitely on the list, and I'm glad I got to see it. You know, I saw Frank Sinatra right, you know, pretty much right before he passed and um had one yeah. of the, well look yeah you know he forgot the lyrics but you know you got to say you saw the you know the best of the best you have to, i have mixed feelings on that whole that whole situation what do you mean frank singing it in the no, 80s I, seeing any artist was he in the 80s 80s yeah he's, any yeah, artist yeah. at the end of their career just to say you saw them and they were they're just an embarrassment to themselves unfortunately no, he but, wasn't no he wasn't no no no, no, no 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 i know i know but still uh, when is when is enough enough you know, and that's why I won't. I won't get deep into it. One of my personal favorites is as disheartening as it is to to think that it is truly the end for Rush. They understand it, and and I think their fans do too because it's not easy stuff to go out there and play every night at sixty and sixty oh, years old. If you so. look at Kiss, if you look at Rolling Stones, and you look at the Who and Led Zeppelin, and whenever these you guys can get roll to, them out, you can and they could still play those they, songs. Those guys, look, you know what those guys are? Those guys are the Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, and the, and the Magic Johnsons of 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 music. Okay, they are the best of the best, and they still pretty much sound damn good. Except I know what you you got this face on that because I said Kiss, and now I'm you know they're the best of the best. Is that what your that face is? No comment. <laughs> But no, you know what I'm saying though. These are the best. These are these are like the, the icons in music history. Now I know you don't like the Rolling Stones, or Kiss, or, Kiss, or, or the, the Who. Who. <laughs> but still, you know what I'm saying. Can I get you, it. Can get you it. picture John Petrucci playing when he's 70 years old, 75 the years old? The stuff that they play now. Exactly. And I'm aware of that already. Exactly. They probably, at some point they're going to hang it up. But Frank did a, did a great job um, singing. He opened up. Actually, no, Shirley MacLaine opened up for him. And you know what? I got to see him play even though it wasn't at his uh at his prime well it's that time of the show mike artist of the podcast which is brought to you by vintage vinyl records new jersey's legendary double v new jersey's legendary independent record store since 1979 located at 51 lafayette road in fords new jersey you could also check out their website at vvinyl.com when was the last time you were there last friday (laughs) okay i didn't think it was you know much longer than that Great people in there. Let's do a show there. I'd love to do a podcast there. I'm not sure if I would like that. I don't, yeah, I guess I don't, I don't know. If, I don't know how they'd feel. They get the you backstage, know, the, owner. the stage in the back. We could just yep. sit there and set up shop. All right, Mike. My artist of the podcast is a band called The Omnific. I recently uh, stumbled across this band. You're welcome. They are a three piece band, but the reason why I like them so much is that there's not just one bass player. There's two. It's bass-tastic. It is. Bass, uh, let's see, you have Matthew Fackrell on bass, you have Toby Peterson Stewart on bass, and then you have on drums Jerome Lemetua. And I, I hope I didn't butcher that last name, and I apologize if I do. I doubt they're going to come all the way from Melbourne, Australia to f- hunt you down. And I think they would let me slide considering the plug, but you can check them out on iTunes, Spotify, Google. Uh, check out their music. And absolutely. Bandcamp, don't forget. And, and, and Bandcamp. You can buy their merch from Bandcamp, actually. You can, absolutely. You can. It's... It's a great band. It's actually some light light music. I wouldn't say progressively heavy. There's no distortion, 
Um, how would you describe it, Mike? But it's, it's proggy. It's got nice progressive concepts in the writing. Very melodic. Does. Very melodic. Nice it's, keys, you know, to fill in the, the 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 missing instruments. Would you, if you, if you, you know, just to to add some nice atmosphere within the song itself that they're trying to accomplish. It's it's really good stuff. It is. It is good stuff, and I like putting it on in the background. It's uh, it's an in between of what I listen to, to be honest with you. And uh, check it out. Absolutely, check this out. You won't do. You won't be disappointed if you like instrumental music. And you know what? Having two bass players, they both know where they stand. Yeah. I don't think they're, you know, one is trying to outdo the other. I mean, it's just a perfect match. And they, they're they fairly young, too. And what they do is it it's not just two guys playing bass mm-hmm. just for playing bass. Exactly. It's actually they make it interesting. Yes, they, 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 fill, they fill the space. Their, their melodies are, are, are excellent. And they're not trying. Some people may think that they're trying to play guitar on the bass. But yeah, it's it's it doesn't. It, I don't think it, it. It feels that way only occasionally, but overall, it's it's they really it really comes off. That's improvisation. I, I think it's it's very well. What's the word? Arranged. Yeah, I think it's, it's very it well arranged. It is surprising. You know, yep. really surprising. You would think you know two bass players, but no, it's it's great. You usually, don't even need one. Hmm? You usually, don't even need one. Well, you need you need somebody to help carry the equipment in, right? If, listen, if I just mention Rush. You know I like bass players. Yeah. Well, the greatest of all time. Arguably. I mean, he's he's definitely top. I won't argue. Yeah, he's definitely top three. No yeah. doubt, Getty Lee, absolutely. All right, Mike, who's your artist of the podcast? My artist. Of Make the this pod- short, will you? I'll try. My artist of the podcast is Dear Apollo. That's it. Good night. <laughs> My artist of the podcast is a band called Dear Apollo. Um, and their, their new record's called Volume 1. I mentioned in the new releases. It came out on the 16th of January. Uh, they they hail from San Diego, California, and everyone knows what San Diego stands for. Um, it's Cote Enbury, who plays all the music, guitar, bass, drums, and keys. And Marielle Diaz-Carrion is the vocalist and lyric, lyricist of the band. It's a two-person band. Um, Marielle's vocals are fantastic. She has a great voice. Um, the music has a bit of gent in it. It's, it's proggy. It's, it's, it's guitar heavy. It's, it's about the songs, though. Really nice stuff. Um, just stumbled upon them in the past month. New fan. Their CD came in the mail today, so it was a perfect time for me to mention them and make them my artists of the podcast. Check them out. Bandcamp, Facebook. Hopefully they're on iTunes, but I'm a Bandcamp guy, so because you could buy their CD from Bandcamp as well, and I'm, I'm all about the merch and supporting music, so check them out. All right, well, it's time to wrap this show up. We want to hear from you, so write in your opinion, comments, or topics you want us to talk about, too. The subject is moot at yahoo.com, and we will bring them up during future shows. Don't forget us on Twitter at TSIM underscore podcast, as well as Facebook in the search bar, Dom Mike, or the subject is moot, as well as YouTube. Just type in the subject is moot, and you will find us. For now, I am Dom, and across from me is Mike, and we are out. (laughs) 